Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Cassie here. So today I have another design video for you guys. I thought it would be very useful um, to kind of talk about things that they don't tell you when you're in school that you kind of end up realizing when you start working in real businesses and real workplaces. Now, just a little disclaimer, obviously technology has advanced a lot. Courses right now probably teach this kind of stuff because there's a lot of boot camps right now that teach you the whole like process from beginning to end. But back when I was in school, it was a little bit different. Number one, you are paying to learn about learning. So in school, you know, they give you a lot of different projects and at the time I was in like a communications design program so there was like print design, there's like not as much like digital media stuff but a lot of the times you're given a project and you have to come up with an idea and then they're just like alright go do it and then in terms of how you actually go about doing things like oh how I use Photoshop, how I use Illustrator, how I use InDesign to actually put together these things that I want to make they don't really teach you how to do that I felt like they didn't really teach me as much technical skills but they taught me a lot about like how you think about why you're designing something but then in other schools that might be more technical they might teach you like so in depth about like how you use photoshop how you vector how you do all this crazy stuff but then they don't teach you how to think and they don't teach you how to come up with good ideas you kind of need both of those things because if all you know is the technical skills and you don't have any good ideas then there's no point in knowing all these technical skills because people pay you for your design process and your design ideas right and then the other flip side is if you're only good at coming up with ideas but you can't actually create anything to showcase your concept then people can't really see the value in what you're doing and you can't really properly explain and actually show people a visual of what you have in mind the reason why I'm saying that like school you pay to learn how to learn is because for me in design school that's how I felt like in school I was paying to be given all these projects and assignments but ultimately the learning actually comes from myself so they give me the guidelines of like what I could do and they kind of guide you towards that direction but to actually achieve the final product it's a lot of like YouTubing trying to figure things out yourself trying this and trying that and then eventually over time through all these projects and like practicing the same thing over and over again you start to get really good at learning because that's just inherently what you have to do you don't just expect them to hand you everything and then you could just put all the pieces together magically so that's why i say the first thing is, is that you're paying them to teach you how to teach yourself okay so the second thing i realized is that after going from university to the real world engineers can't build everything you design and that was kind of shocking to me you know like because in school you can make anything you want you know there isn't really any restrictions and it's kind of like a passion project every single project is a passion project you could do whatever you want from beginning to end but then when you go into the real world and you start working for a company and you start working around different people you're you're gonna notice you can't go to blue sky with it you have to really design within the confines of what your company will be able to actually build and send out as a product at the end of the year so it's not really just i can make this crazy idea this beautiful interface that does all these fancy things and then they're just gonna magically be able to make that no that's completely not how it works for your design project to be followed through and to actually be created it depends on three main things the first one is the budget of your company and the second thing is time time is important as well because you can't spend like three years making this one project or this one feature you, you have a timeline of when you need to complete it so you have to think about that when you're designing a interface like it can't be something that's too extraordinary to the point where it's going to take years to finish and the third one is the scope of the project so usually project managers or like ceos whatever they'll have an idea of like this is what we need to get done by the end of 
this cycle and so if the budget the time and the scope are all not perfectly balanced your design project will be in danger because these three things cannot be unbalanced sometimes your ideas have to be set aside or they have to be broken down into more manageable chunks because you just can't design and launch everything you you imagine it to be um, and there's a lot of deciding factors as well okay and then the third thing <laughs> This sounds kind of ridiculous is that in school they don't teach you how to do design handoffs to engineers and other other disciplines because obviously in school the end of the project is the end of the project but in the real world when you finish designing an interface you have to hand off these things to other people within your same team you know i didn't know how to do cut-ups i didn't know how to do spec guides like i had no idea what it was for some reason in school i just never thought about it i thought I thought as far as, okay, you design the UI and the UX and you have this like product with like a clickable prototype and that's it, like it's done. It is not done at all. You need to provide a spec guide for every single screen that they're gonna be building so that you make sure that the engineers know where to position everything. You have to make sure you have all the cut-ups and all the assets provided for them. So once they're building it in code, they can actually put in this picture that you wanna use or put in this illustration you created. Like they need all of these things and they didn't teach me in school how to make them. And so that was a learning process and even now, it's still like, what's the best way to optimize your spec guide and cut up process so it's easier for engineers to use? There's like softwares nowadays where you can just easily generate spec guides and stuff, but it depends on your company. Some companies, they don't invest any money into that kind of software to make that process from designers to developers like transition more easily. So then you end up having to like do it just by your hand and really just mark mark everything on the screen by yourself. And then the very fourth thing, which I think was the most important thing to me is that engineers speak a different language. So when you go from design school and you've never worked with engineers before and then you go work at a workplace and it's your first time interacting with like 25 of them for example maybe it's like one designer one ux designer and then a team of like 15 engineers or something like that it's really really intimidating they sound super smart with all their like crazy jargon and like all this code stuff that like doesn't make sense to you right because i know in the beginning i was very intimidated by that i didn't know how to talk to them i didn't know how they were building things everything was so new to me so that was what was really, really shocking. And I learned over time that engineers, they're more focused on the functionality of the feature, you know? They're trying to really just make the product work. So, you know, they don't really care if your pixel is off by 10. They don't care if your typeface looks weird or it's the wrong typeface. They don't care if your color, which is supposed to be red, is suddenly not really red but like a pinkish red here they're not really looking at the bigger picture of the entire product itself and how everything connects within the product and how it feels like from a user perspective to use the product as ui ux designers we're thinking about how a customer would feel when they're using our product is this easy to use do things like flow easily is the interface very clear so as designers we really have to like reinforce and teach them and show them the value in having good ui and ux and in order to do that you have to kind of speak their language and understand their thought process over yours and so what i ended up doing was i took like a front-end development course just to get a quick rundown of like what it is they're doing and what i'm more interested in and then just talking to engineers more often and really putting yourself in their shoes and then just building relationships with them so that they can eventually trust your decisions as well and understand where you're coming from as well so a lot of it really is just learning how to communicate with them and start to have a better understanding of the jargon they're speaking to like they have certain terms that kind of maybe don't make sense at the beginning to you but ask them what they mean by that and over time speaking to them or like listening to them talk will make a bit more sense versus before where it's just like this is crazy like i don't know what the hell is going on i think the best 
software engineers are also the ones that can see both sides of the coin. You know, they're not only focused about making sure that the product is usable, but they're also focused on the experience of it as well. And that goes for both designers and engineers. Like if both of these people can understand each other's perspectives, that's kind of the most ideal harmonious balance. All right, guys, that's it for this short little video. I hope you found it to be really useful. These are essentially all of the design realities I learned after school, after working in the real world. So I hope it is interesting for you and you've learned a little bit from this video. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this. All right, bye guys.